Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about chaos cults as we get into the Brotherhood of the Horned Darkness. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. And of course, if you have any suggestions, just comment down below. But with that said, let's get into 40 Facts on the Brotherhood of the Horned Darkness. The Brotherhood of the Horned Darkness is a dangerous and highly organized chaos cult, whose origins and activities go back, according to some sources, to the founding of the Calixis Sector, and quite possibly beyond. The Brotherhood, known to some as the Pact of Balfomale, or the Black Society, is recognized by the Ordo Malleus as a near-archetypical demon-worshipping chaos cult, but it is always recognizable in its core beliefs and the object of its worship, the demon Balfomale. The Horned Darkness The cult has threatened scores of worlds at various points in the sector's history, and individual brotherhoods have ranged greatly in power and dominion, from the dozen individuals in a single guild, to grand malefic conspiracies encompassing a chain of worlds with thousands of cultists bound to Balfomale's service. Balfomale, the Horned Darkness, is a demonic power that has seemed to lurk in the shadows of the Calixis Sector since it was founded and doubtless far older than this. Over the years, the Inquisition has acquired considerable lore and anecdotal evidence about this being whose power is at least equivalent to a demon prince, if not greater. Seemingly owing no direct fealty or allegiance to any other of its kind, it has the characteristics and nature of a power broker. It is a being who demands worship, obedience, and sacrifice, who in return grants patronage and power. Legends and scraps of lore describe Balfomale as a towering figure of unholy fire and billowing darkness, a horned shadow that can be summoned from a bonfire piled high with burning hearts given in offerings. The testimony of cult members brought to question by the orders of the Inquisition claim that the demon may also take the shape of a Saturnine man or striking woman, a dealmaker whose honeyed tongue might corrupt a saint but whose eyes burn like embers, and whose shadow cast in the terrible flickering shape of its true nature. The demon is a powerful and dangerous entity, and one that cannot be commanded or controlled by even the most powerful sorcerers. Some scholars within the Ordo Malleus speculate that its appearance in reality are actually little more than warp projections, the meanest portion of a far greater whole that coils in the immaterium beyond. The demon's demands on his servants are unremitting and steep. He demands complete and unswerving allegiance to him above all other creeds and gods, and the pledge of the follower's immortal soul. For those with whom he entered into a dark path, his powers come with a great price. He demands true sacrifice, the destruction of something of great personal value to the petitioner in Balfomil's name. Just what the sacrifice entails will vary greatly, but commonly involves the betrayal or death of a close friend or a cherished dream. For some cold-hearted petitioners with no such loved ones, the demon has been known to take a hand, an eye, or even the entire face. While the Brotherhood of Darkness was formed to venerate its demonic lord, there is one overriding motivation that lies behind everything that the cult does, and that is control. The cult's mortal masters, known as servants, a reference to their direct relationship to the Brotherhood's demonic patron, are characterized by their lust of power and dominance over their fellows, mostly manifested through quite mundane means, such as wealth, influence, authority, status, and fear. They desire not to bring down the Imperium, but to rule it and wield ultimate power from behind the scenes, to become in effect the secret masters of all. The Brotherhood's membership, which covers both sexes, despite its name, is drawn almost exclusively from the rich, the powerful, and the ambitious, who despite their wealth and status, desire even more. To them, the Brotherhood's purpose is to help them dominate others and obtain more privilege and power. The demon at the cult's heart also demands worship, which takes the form of obedience and devotion, rather than fanatical faith or belief in its divinity. But despite the veneer of the cult's power-mongering and the secretive schemes of its controlling cabals, the demon Balfomil demands its due. As a result, the cult maintains a string of hidden shrines to its demonic patron. 
These are temples of forbidden worship, where ritual murder is carried out in Balfomel's name, and where the Cabal members can commune with their dark master, call down malefic curses on their enemies, and summon other demons to do their bidding. Such shrines and temples are constructed in secret and hidden within noble estates or concealed in disguised industrial facilities and other forlorn and abandoned locales where the cult's businesses can be conducted far from prying eyes. No matter how well hidden, these structures remain a vulnerability to the cult, as they must be left in place once constructed and consecrated and cannot be abandoned or easily moved. Indeed, the authorities stumbling on such a temple to the Horned Darkness have precipitated the cult's discovery and destruction in the past. On more than a dozen occasions, the cult has been discovered spreading corruption at the heart of several commercial empires and noble houses. It has also spread its tendrils into the apparatus of state, the administratum, and even the ecclesiarchy. Only through the eternal vigilance of the Inquisition, and with much destruction and bloodletting, as the Brotherhood been excised. In the most perilous of these cases, the Brotherhood, through the front of a Tellurian combine, almost managed to co-op and corrupt the Lord Sector's governor before it was found out and destroyed. This has led some within the Ordo Malleus to search for some focus for the demon on this world, over and above its worth as the Sector capital. Some believe there is some warp rift, tainted relic, or phenomenon which if could be uncovered and destroyed, might provide a more permanent solution to the problem. The demon hunter, Orpheus, uncovered a potential name for this focus in the secret ciphers of the cult, that of Corzian. Just what this Corzian is, a place, an artifact, allegory, or an individual, remains unproven, but evidence suggests that it is somewhere in Scintilia's barren wastelands. To many who are attracted to the cult, Involvement can seem a rational and even sensible choice, an allegiance with a powerful force that can grant them desires, protect them from their enemies, and see them triumph over their rivals. They may rationalize it as a simple act of commerce and fealty, no different in essence than swearing loyalty to a guild or siding with a great house of the sector's nobility. For many, the fact that recognizable strictures, such as binding contracts, strict hierarchy, and demands of obedience are all cornerstones of the Brotherhood's structures, make the cult merely a continuation of what their lives already demand. The cult fosters these lies by taking on the trappings of a secret society dedicated to furthering its members' interests. Often, it only reveals its true nature to aspirants once they have been fully tested, compromised, and tempted by the power and influence the cult offers. Such sane and civilized trappings are of course ultimately a deceit, and one willingly embraced by the cult's members to conceal the dark and festering truth at the cult's heart, the demon Balfomel. The Brotherhood also sees the value in blackmail brutality, and the exploitation of the vice of others as effective tools to bring the weak to heal and ensure their obedience. It prefers to intimidate and corrupt as an exercise of power. When the time for killing comes, the Brotherhood either employs calculated and overwhelming force so as to make a terrifying example to others, or masks its crime as accidents or random acts of violence, whichever best suits its needs. It is this high degree of self-control that has made the cult so dangerous in the past. Its ability to operate clandestinely and sparingly, where others less organized and more psychotic cults often expose themselves by succumbing to their own excess or deluded beliefs, making it an unusual subtle enemy for the Inquisition's ordos. Without a doubt, the most potent danger the cult ever possessed was to the very heart of the sector itself some 440 Terran years ago. During those days, the Brotherhood had become embedded in the Sector's infrastructure and even within the Lucid Court. Meanwhile, its figurehead organization, the Tellurian Combine, rose to become the dominant economic force in the Sector. Faced with a dire truth when uncovered, the Inquisition had a difficult choice to make. To denounce and attack the Combine directly, would have tempted anarchy in the highest echelons of imperial government, and perhaps even risk open civil war within the sector. Instead, the entire resources and wiles of the Ordo Calixis, the Malleus, Hereticus, Xenos, and others, were brought to bear in a true shadow war. 
Within a decade, the whole edifice of the Combine was mercilessly brought down, its cabals isolated and destroyed by covert raids, exorcist death squads, and contract assassinations. At the same time, the cult's workings and secret pawns were forced into the light and slaughtered in what is believed to have been the largest deployment of Officio Assassinorum agents in the history of the Calixis sector. Much of what the Inquisition knows of the Brotherhood and its dark patron harkens back to this great and secret purge. It was the famed demon hunter, Orpheus himself, at the head of the intercession force of the Great Knight's Terminators, that finally vanquished the Avatar of the Horned Darkness in a hidden temple in the catacombs deep under the Tullurian Chancellery. Although the power of the cult was broken, and thousands of unclean heretics and their duped lackeys were slain, the Brotherhood did not die. Time and again, signs of the Brotherhood stirring has come to light, although it has never managed to attain even a fraction of its former power and glory, or so the Inquisition believes. Others, however, believe this relative silence simply means that it has become even more subtle and adept at hiding its tracks. They fear that unless the true root of the demonic incursion is found, it is only a matter of time before the Brotherhood rises once again to corrupt the Calixis sector. Perhaps the greatest shock in the aftermath of the whole Tellurian affair was the revelation of the identity of the Brotherhood's greatest leader, Flavian Invicta, Cardinal Palatine of the Ecclesiarchy. Invicta was a highly ranked but otherwise undistinguished clergyman, attached as part of the Adeptus Ministorum's delegation to the Lucid Court. He appeared in public to be a pious old man from an old and respected family, in the twilight of his ecclesiarchal career, but was in fact a ruthless power broker and a leader who harbored ambitions to be the true power behind the throne of the whole sector. Invicta was thought to have sold his soul to Balfomail while still a young man, and a close inspection of his personal history uncovered countless strange occurrences and the mysterious death of many rivals and competitors. The official records state that Invicta died suddenly of natural causes. But rumors within the Ordo Malleus persist that he remains alive, cursed by the boon of longevity that his master granted, screaming endlessly in a pain amplifier, buried deep beneath the Bastion Serpentis. And those were 40 facts on the Brotherhood of the Horned Darkness. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm really enjoying um, all the lore that I'm um, putting out for Chaos. Uh, Chaos is pretty awesome lore-wise. Uh, Game-wise and, and like miniature-wise, I like the conversion work of like the Dark Mechanicum, but that's about it. I don't really like Chaos Space Marines. Um, the look of demons is like okay, but it's not like amazing or whatever. Um, but I am enjoying uh, putting out this lore, and I hope you're enjoying um, listening to the lore. If you guys have any other suggestions, just comment down below. Uh, now, as far as the demon himself, I really thought that Balfomeo was corn. Um, but I think after reading the lore that he might just be a demon who leans more towards um, corn, but he's not all the way there. He's still like a, uh, he's like Bellacor where he's undivided. He gets um, empowered by most uh, chaos, uh, but he's not like all the way there, uh, you know, one specific side or whatever. Um, and there is like a, a cool sense of he is feeding off of the worship. So much like all the other chaos gods and something we've talked about when we talk about resurrecting the emperor and something we've talked about um, with regards to the emperor being a god, really it's just worship. Worship empowers creatures within the warp because humans, um, like our emotion, show up in the warp um, and that's just like sustenance for whatever entity is being formed. doesn't necessarily have to be a chaos god. It could be... Um, you know, a lesser entity, um, and it feeds off of that. Uh, so I think that's what's happening with Balfomeo. Um, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Comment down below if I'm not. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's, it's really great lore, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and yeah, the winner for the um, uh, Chaos Starter Set giveaway is going to be announced tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for all of that. Uh, with that said, I'll see you tomorrow. This is Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out. Oh, <laughs>